how was it for the first day and um, a different feel with some of the new faces and stuff? It was good, didn't it? It did, slightly different feel with the four new guys coming in, a few new staff floating around the place. Um, good energy, our young guys have been back for two weeks already so they're the kings of the castle at the moment. Um, but nice to have the full contingency back and really start to build into December. The couple that stood out, Griffin Logue, he looks like he's really coming on and fully fit and ready to go. Yeah, I've seen a few of the media articles coming out about some of our younger players, Griffin, Brennan Cox, um, kind of Blakely, Ed Langdon, those guys that have done a big volume of work over the off-season and first part of this pre-season. We're hopeful some of these guys can step up and start to take uh, more of an impact on our team this year. And Harley, uh, he looks really fit, doesn't he? He's not quite into full training, but he looks really good. He does. I think he was jogging some laps at the end there um, and did some ball work during the session. So, yeah, hopefully we can get some games into him next year. Are you apprehensive about, about that, that uh, given his history, you're just hoping that it all falls into place? No. Confident it's, it's going to be OK? <laughs> Now, have you had much to do with the, the four new recruits in the off-season? A little bit um, in, during that courting process. Um, spoke to Rory and particularly Jesse. Um, and and Reese. I spoke to on the phone and, and this morning at the club. And Travi, obviously, I used to play with at Claremont and State Footy, so I caught up with him last week and pretty excited to have him back at the club, someone my age and um, a deep thinker. So, yeah, we're lucky to have him on board. What's the dialogue between yourself and Jesse been like? Good, yeah. He's um, got a bit of work to do as far as getting his body right, but um, saying all the right things and wanting to come over and impact at this footy club, and I think uh, we're all um, pretty optimistic about what he can do, albeit there's a lot of work ahead of him. When you look at the forward line now, what goes through your mind knowing that there are some really good targets there? Yeah, there's a bit of a jostle going to happen down there with Matt Tabernar, obviously, and Cam McCarthy, Shane Kirsten, these sorts of guys mm. still capable of playing really important roles, but now Rory and... Jesse slot in. I think what it looks like for us is it straightens us up. Um, as, a, as a midfield, we've got targets to kick to. We can build a structure around that. Um, I don't think we're relying on these guys to change the whole dynamic of our footy club, but uh, I think there's cause for optimism. Since Pav has gone, do you, is it going to be a new feeling for you coming out of the midfield with ball in hand and seeing three or four key targets to kick to as opposed to maybe one or two? Oh, I don't think it'll feel too much different. Dave Mundy's played that role for us down there. Um, but I think, yeah, I think we can afford to structure up slightly different with a couple of key pillar, pillars down there. And we have insurance policy now. With Matt Tabernard going out last year, it really changed the way we had to play. So now we've got three or four guys that can fill that role. Looks like the forward line's been bolstered, but the midfield sort of takes a bit of a hit with Lockie Neal. Um, what was your conversations with him like in the lead up to it and then obviously when he, when he left as well? Yeah, it was an interesting period for, um, for Locke and the club. Obviously disappointed to lose him, but Locke's a friend of mine first and foremost, and so I was able to work with him and counsel him as a mate, um, and also as the captain of Fremantle, probably two different points of views there, but um, just wish him all the best with his new, new role up at Brisbane. You think twice about going to the wedding? No, not at all, no, wouldn't miss it. But who steps up there, Connor Blakely, an obvious one to maybe go into the midfield, that sort of thing? Yeah, I think that vacuum will be filled by a number of guys, Connor, Stephen Hill will pinch hit. Uh, and then obviously Chera and Brayshaw, Tom North is another guy that's coming as well. So um, it's exciting. I think that, that that jostling for spots is open now and whoever has the best pre-season, obviously Bailey Banfield's another guy that wants to evolve from just being a tagger. Um, and Dave Mundy and I can try and mentor and lead them through. What's your big focus for the summer? You, you look really good last season and that, that hammy just took a long time to come back from. I think that you've probably hit it on the head, that continuity. This is my 10th pre-season. Um, there's no records going to be set by me in December, January, February. I really want to play 20 to 25 games next year um, of good footy. So yeah, my focus is to train as much as I can and not be hitting straps until around that round one period and, and try and play the full year next year. Is Lockie not being in that midfield mix put any more pressure on you? In that regard? Or? Uh, potentially. Won't really know what it feels like until we start playing, but um, I think you've seen professional sporting teams time and time again when a vacuum is created, um, new guys will step up and I think that's good for our club. With, with the continuity and wanting to get all of those games next year, do you have to ease your way into pre-season or do you just attack it every single session as hard as you can? No, there'll be, there'll be a bit more of a balanced easing back in. Mm -hmm. I had a slight clean up on a knee, so I'm a bit later with my off-season preparations. Um, so yeah, I won't be flying until after Christmas at least. Do you think you'll spend more time in the midfield this season given you do have those targets now up forward? 
I spent a fair bit of time in the midfield last I, year. I know, I know, but then you went forward for bits and pieces as well. Yeah, I don't think my role will change too much. Yeah. How do you see Sandy, Darcy and Lobb working in? Would Sandy play all games? Do you think they'll manage him? Or? Not sure. Uh, I think if we can have Aaron playing every game, that would be great and he would want to do that. Uh, I think the pragmatic approach is probably we need to balance up how much footy he's going to play and whether Rory plays as a forward uh, and or in the ruck um, is more up to the coaching staff, but I think they're good problems to have. And Sean looks good, doesn't he? he looks like he might be something. Sean does look good. He's an um, ambitious bloke and, and I think he's had a, a good pre-season, off-season so far. Um, but we need him to continue to develop and really take hold of that number one ruck spot as quickly as he can. From a team point of view, what do you think you guys can achieve next season? Um, next season? I, I think really looking forward to next season is a bit premature. You know, there's still clubs on holidays because mm. they play deep into the finals. Um, and so looking too far ahead at the moment is um, just doesn't serve any, any purpose. Talk's pretty cheap at the moment. Leading up to Christmas, we've just got to galvanise as a group trying to establish an identity. Um, our members and fans should be really excited and optimistic about what the season ahead holds, but at the moment we've got to knuckle down, do the work, um, get to know our game plan. We'll go up to the Gold Coast and have a camp up there and really look forward to next year. You've spoken about the identity a bit, Matt. You did at the end of last year saying you didn't have an identity as a club at the moment, the way you play. What do you want the identity to be? Uh, a, a winning culture. That's, that's what all teams want. I think we've, we've had the shopping list out the last few years with drafts. Uh, and trading and we've brought in an eclectic group of players from across the country a lot of West Australians have come back home um, I think we'll only bring in four players at the national draft this week so now we've established a group and the idea is to try and build around a Ross Line game plan that's going to set us up to win some games of footy next year. Is the aim there to be that quick bounce back I mean what is it two of the last two years eight, eight wins is there the genuine belief that it can become finals though next year? I hope so. Um, <laughs> last year Eagles premiers. How hard was that to watch? Obviously, being a docker, but also the the opposing captain, I guess as well. Yeah, it's a difficult space to be in. Um, I um, I watched on with envy the way they prepared and played, particularly in that final series. And um, and uh, give them full credit. I sent a few messages to Luke Shuey and Shannon Hearn after the game, congratulating them because um, I've had a bit a bit of stuff to do and a bit of work with those guys. And yeah, and full credit to them. But as a Crosstown rival, you do look on with a bit of jealousy and, and now it's our job as the underdogs to really um, try and improve as a team and, and get to finals next year. What do you think of that push to have three grand finals? Have you had a chance to think about that? I, hadn't, I haven't read into any of that dialogue so I don't really have an opinion on that at the moment. In terms, of, oh, sorry. In terms of the game plan, what tweaks do you or can fans expect to see this year? I'm not sure yet. Uh, this is my first day in, so all the game plan stuff will be rolled out in the next couple of days. So Gold Coast, that's the main main point of call to, to learn. I think so. It. Yeah, it's yeah. A, getting everyone on the same page up there. Yeah. Yep. With yeah. the optimism created from a trade week, and it's important to be cautious as well. It does take time, doesn't it, for recruits to settle in and be able to make this impact? Absolutely. Yeah, I think always temper that optimism with the fact that we've got to get to know each other, put in a lot of hard work over the next couple of months, and um, and. Uh, and yeah, really get ready for round one in, in four months' time. Did you, did you think the camp was something that was needed? Did you have any say in, in that sort of stuff? A little bit of say, yeah. It's not going to be the reason we win or lose any games next year, but I think it's important to try and do some new things. When is that trip to the Gold Coast then? I think it's mid-December. Something like that. And the, the whole club getting over, everyone? I, th I think that's the plan, yeah. yeah. Is Jesse, do you know, have an, any idea when he's going to be able to get into full training? No, be part of that no or I don't. Sorry, I haven't spoken to him about the foot. No, I haven't. Just a quick word on the new haircut. <laughs> new haircuts, <laughs> yes. Um, took the big move to cut the top knot off. Got a feedback from Aaron Sanderlands over the last <laughs> year or so. So, um, yeah, I've got no idea where it's going from here, but probably back to a shorter do. And AFL X, we, we hear that perhaps you're involved. Can you tell us anything about that? I'm not sure I can just yet, but I will be involved in AFL X. So it would be your first pick if you uh, <laughs> if you were a captain of it. From anyone in the competition, um, first pick probably Lockie Neal, I'd say. <laughs> 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 <laughs>